everybody thank you for tuning in this is episode 130 of love at first scent with me Persele's first comment goes to FW who says hi again this is going to be the last of the videos for today and thank you very much to all of you who've been watching all who have watched all four of them if you're watching the recording I am trying to do two things at the same time which is kind of hard when you're male uh, if you're watching the recording but you would like to have the experience of watching all of the videos that were broadcast today in the order in which they were broadcast live then look in the video description below because after a, a, a few hours after the live broadcast I will link to all of the other videos. We started with this is not a blue bottle 1.6 from Histoire de Parfum then we moved on to Dylan Blue Pour Femme from Versace we've just finished a video on Caron's Aimez-moi comme je suis and for the final video for today we are going to I can't show you the proper bottle because this is all I've got just a vial this is the latest from Nazomato which is called Fantoma, or I, I just, I suppose if you're French, you would call it Fantoma, Fantomas. If you're Italian, you may say Fantomas. I, 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 I don't know, never mind. But that's what it is. Uh, Nazamato is one of these brands that has got a really, really strong cult following. I must confess, even though I quite like some of their perfumes, or I should say some of his perfumes, they've all been made by One Nose by Alessandro Gualtieri with whom I did a really, really interesting interview a couple of years ago for Wallpaper magazine. So if you look on my blog, you should be able to find it, you should be able to find it, or you could just Google Nazamato Wallpaper. The only one of theirs that I have actually been tempted to purchase, and I have, is this one, Black Afghano, despite the name, because uh, I think it is a really, really fantastic, massive, massive, uh, woody, ambery, warm scent. But the other ones have never actually caused me to feel tempted to, to part with my with my hard-earned pennies. This one I haven't smelt at all. You've gone very, very quiet on the comments. Uh, lovely bottle, says Thea, but, but this, that isn't for this one, right? All of the Nazomato bottles follow the same pattern, except that they have a different um, cap. Uh, and I think I'm right in saying that all of the caps are wood, except that for this one that we're going to smell now, the Fantomas, uh, the cap is wood that has been covered in a sort of metallized effect to make it look mirrory. So here we go. This is going to be interesting. Nazamato says Eric. While I'm doing this, I should say, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Feel free to leave questions, uh, ask comments, consider supporting my work on coffee. You will find a link to that below. Um, now, I think we'll do a, a little bit of a double thing here. We'll do a little bit on skin as it's the last video of the day so it doesn't matter whether I do some on skin because it won't interfere with anything and I will yeah I thought that might happen so let's just bend the blotter um Vitali says is it the same phantom as in phantom phantom the French crime fiction character yes I think it might be I deliberately haven't looked at the press material but I think it might be Eric says the China white one is ceramic that was the only one I owned okay and here we go I have to say, I'm already getting from the back of my hand a whiff of something. Um, Carlos says hi from Chihuahua, Mexico. Thank you very much. Uh, try again. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm getting a whiff of something. Okay, put aside the fact that it's weird, interesting, but feels to me like a lot of synthetic sandalwoods. I'm always a little bit wary of an overdose of synthetic sandalwoods because anyway what, what is it like on paper uh, all of um, the Nazamato perfumes tend to be or are extra strength and they've also done a few in oils which you may be aware of this is what's the forehead doing now because this is this is this is intrigue I think the expression is concerning says the but Okay, now I'm thinking that I'm not surprised that he decided to go for a metallic effect for the cap of this one, but... Because there is some weird silveriness. It's definitely puzzled, says Eric. No, and puzzled is good, right? I think puzzled is good for perfumery. It's certainly up to a point, because I love it when I can't work a perfume out quickly. But what is that? That's... it's... it's... It's like, 
It's like a shot of steel, a bolt of steel or silver. So something, something quite metallic, possibly industrial metallic, so not silver, maybe sort of like, not maybe not natural metallic, but maybe more like steel, some kind of alloy, something, something human made, over this weird sandalwoody, bassy hum, thrum, which somehow feels like a sort of volcano core. It smells dangerous. It smells volatile. And I, I, I don't mean volatile evaporate quickly. I mean volatile temperament. It sort of smells black and blood red and silvery shiny at the same time. It's certainly intriguing. I can't, um, I can't immediately compare it to anything else at the moment. Sounds science fiction-y, says Gavin. Yes, maybe. Sounds similar to Baptême du Feu. Ooh, um, I would have to go back to my bottle of that particular one, but it's not reminding me of that. Wasn't Baptême du Feu pretty quiet? Time for Clark Kent, says Thea. Why? I don't get it. Am I being slow? Why, why, why? Why Clark Kent? Okay. Sometimes it also helps to, when you, when you can't sort of pin something down, it helps to think about it in terms of what it's not, right? Sounds like a broken thermometer with mercury spilling out. I've never had the experience of breaking a thermometer. In fact, I don't think I've had a mercury thermometer in my household or in my possession for decades. We've only ever had digital ones lately. So what is it not? It's not overly, obviously citrusy to start with, or spicy, or floral. Superman, Man of Steel. Okay, I get it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, but you see, I don't do DC. For me, it would be Marvel, so you'd have to say Iron Man. Um, really curious. And, and it sort of plays the same two notes running parallel with each other. So it's got the kind of thinner silvery metallic note, like a sort of silver thread, and then this bassy thrum. I would have to find out how this wears on skin. I've got some press material, um, but I have a feeling it's not going to be terribly helpful or terribly detailed. Uh, but let us take a look at it together now. So what have we got? Nazomato, it says, I start making something, but at a certain point, it starts making choices by itself. It is the process that interests and guides me. I like the feeling that I'm losing control and I'm not the only one making the choice. My main intention is to create something that is alive and is able to tell new things. Okay, so that's just a sort of general thing from Gualtieri. Fantomas, this bottle of perfume is part of the project Nazomato. The fragrance is an elusive hint towards the transgressive act that has been carried out with an ease of a refined precision. A transgressive act. We talked about crime. Could it be murder? A search to manipulate and amplify the power of the nose. Fantomas leaves an undeniable trace for further investigation. A lasting fragment embodying the wit and charm of a perfectly executed plan. So it's all crime references, isn't it? A mysterious fragrance suitable for defiant circumstances that seemly I suppose that means seemingly, evokes olfactory illusions with its continuous development on the skin. An idea towards a more harmonious world or its destruction, a smell of a sophisticated crime. Maybe it's meant to make us think of blood. Maybe the metal is meant to be blood, but I'm not instantly getting that, that, that sharp shock of blood. Uh, the packaging. Inspired by the most notorious crime scenes, really? The packaging is an invitation to investigate, explore and draw one's own conclusions. Uh, because it's mirrored, okay. The Fantomas bottle cap is made of a hazelnut wood that went through a vacuum metallization process resulting in four reflective sides. As with all that other Nazimato fragrances, the whole packaging is made in Italy. And guess what? Yeah, it's not actually going to tell us anything about the perfume. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> but that's obviously very, very, very deliberate. Uh, Yura says they should have called this Cluedo, and Gavin says, 
Moriarty Farty, which I think is the quip quip of the day. Um, there's something animalic about it as well. There's something vaguely barnyard animalic about it. So I, I would imagine it's. So you're right about Iron Man, says the. I'd imagine it's actually a fairly simple formula, but composed of large, heavy hitting materials. Something giving it this silveriness, and then synthetic sandalwoods, musks, and something animalic in the base. I'll have to see how it develops, but it feels like an interesting accord rather than a finished perfume. Is every Nazamato intended to be more pretentious than the last, says Kim? Hmm. Very good question. I'll leave you to answer that one. Uh, looking at Fragrantica, are you getting melon and chewing gum? Okay, now you say melon, the silveriness actually maybe could be expressed through something aquatic, which would take us into melon territory, but not overly fruity, not sort of sweetly fruity. Definitely one for the blotter update. Okay, stay tuned to social media folks for details of when the next episodes of Love at First Scent will be coming. Fingers crossed, I'm, I'm trying to line up some interviews for the end of the month, uh, some good ones. So hopefully I'll be able to reveal more about those soon. But for now, uh, Eurus says animalic in what way? Barnyardy. So yes, I suppose civity, barn, barn animally. Um, be good. Thank you very much for tuning in and I shall see you soon. Take care. Bye now.